mic stands. These suck. Your sucks. Mine's pretty sturdy over here. Well, yeah, because I bought that one for me and then gave it to you. Because <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Because I'm, I feel like I'm clumsier than you. So I need something Are sturdy. You? I feel like I am. Really? I feel like I'm constantly like dropping stuff and tripping over stuff. So am I. I've only ever seen you drop one thing. Okay, I don't drop stuff, but I run into things and trip constantly. Apparently, that's a sign of ADHD. It's like having... I, okay, it's really hard too because what's the phrase? Two birds of a fe- feather flock together. What? <laughs> don't. Don't you start. Never heard that. Two birds of a feather flock together. Never. It's that like was... people that are the same end up hanging out together. Okay. That was the first time I've ever heard that phrase. I'm looking it up because I don't want to be an idiot. I don't. <laughs> I've got. I feel like that Nick. No, no, it was it Joey and Frankie's pot. Have you listened to their podcast? Have you seen their clips on TikTok? You I would love them. Oh, I the brothers. The dark, are they brothers? Yeah, I think so. With the dark hair. Were I they, don't think they're brothers. Where they just roast each other the whole time? Yeah, they're not brothers. They're just best friends. You're kidding? Because yeah, I thought I heard one of them be like, "Yeah, when mom said, maybe we're talking about Frankie and Joey." Yeah, they're like they have like the really thick Long Island accent. Yeah, they're yeah. not. I don't. I I am almost. I am. I'm ninety three percent positive they're not <laughs> siblings. I am eighty seven percent positive they are. Look it up. Okay, I have so many things to look up right now. Hold on. Two uh, t- birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. Hold on. What are you on the like, sixth People, page of Google? It is literally <laughs> the first thing that comes up. It's like the Google dictionary. We have verified this bullshit. I forgot that we're on Rachel and Sensor. I swear you. Okay. Birds of a feather flock together. People of same sorts or with the same tastes and interests will be found together. So Hmm. that's why we always talk about how we're like, are all people not like this? Because we only hang out with people like us. Interesting. And so we think everyone is like, like, because of the ADHD-ness. Right. We end up hanging out together so we think everyone has adhd because well, no one else can stand to be around us <laughs> it, there's an adjustment period with new people there really there is, really is an adjustment period where we're masking for a, like a few months yes and then we're slowly releasing our, uh, yeah. our true and selves then go, why are you and then we're not faking who we are no we're just suppressing the zoomies basically yes and hyper focusing on focusing on what the person's saying and not trying to like over talk and Oh, talk over the, them and the interrupting oh my god i'm so bad at it yeah same and like people with like you and i we understand so like when we interrupt yeah. we're like uh-huh, uh-huh uh-huh okay back to me right <laughs> yeah we always get back to where we were yes um so yeah birds of a feather flock together so we think that everyone has adhd and everything's a sign of adhd because everyone's always talking about it but it's i literally don't think it it's just because we hang out with each other you don't think being clumsy is a sign uh, no my, it might be i just my mic needs to go up significantly i have a dog i call dibs on sitting <laughs> there we go um wait, you're okay. gonna have fun editing that uh, yep um so you don't think being clumsy oh i think it is i was just saying i was about to say i think it's a sign of adhd and i was like everything's a sign of adhd and then, and then i had that brief moment of realization and said hey Step out your bubble, Ballinger, and think about it because I've been trying to, you know, whenever, because people are, I think it was Abby was like, everyone has ADHD now. And I was like, no, baby, you just hang out with me and my friends. Right. If you look at our friend group, like all the friends she brought in, no. No. A Devin, except Devin. But she's, yeah. She's more of how females normally present ADHD. Yeah. And then you and I are us- are more of how men present. Yeah. And then we're gay. Do you think there's a correlation <gasps> there? Oh, because Devin's straight. Yeah. Like so straight. Do you think there's a correlation? There might be. Like why? Breaking news. This is not any facts at all. <laughs> they were just t- s- bullshitting as friends. So do you think, okay, which women do you know have, that have ADHD? Well, no, because we can't out people because we know a lot of like pan or bi people who or, or yeah or yeah you know in straight relationships they don't talk about it yeah um i think there might be a correlation between no just be, with my four sam person sample size four person <laughs> <laughs> with no research done uh-huh it might be it could do be. we have more testosterone 
do you think gay people have more te- like like, no, I'm like saying- lesbian women might have more testosterone no mask presenting mask presenting women might have more testosterone i mean that's something i would read on buzzfeed and believe but i've heard that we they don't do any testing like that on gay people because they don't want yeah like uh what's the word genocide, genocide. Yeah. To happen. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? I actually don't need the facts figures right. on this. Yeah. I just, I'd rather live. It's been like they, scientists from around the world for decades now have recognized that there is a gay gene. They can map it. They know what it is. They have like, they have the technology to, to find it, figure it out, whatever. But they all collectively, as the world, refuse to purposely like map it pinpoint it find it out and release that that information Good. yeah because they don't if, if like another holocaust happens they don't want basically governments using 23 and me and ancestry dna to find that gene and then that round gay people up crazy right i hate how terrible the world is but i so badly because mm-hmm. then it just proves you're literally born that way yes it's genetic it's passed down <laughs> That's so crazy. And that also proved like people are like, there's more gay people now than ever. I'm like, no, there's more acceptance. Ex- there's yeah, there's more people who are living that life yes. and not be- closeting it and right. shame, like hiding behind it. Yeah. Uh, hiding it from people. Yeah. They exist. Right. Because being gay, like especially back in like the Roman Empire and like, you know, way back then, it was very acceptable. So yeah. these men, I mean, they would they would a lot of times marry the women so that they could have children like with legitimacy. Yeah. But they would like every week go to these sex parties. Yeah. They loved an orgy back yeah, then. And they would hook up with men because it they wasn't were even like it wasn't even like a thought. It was just men and women. And oh, yeah. Whoever you were attracted to. Yeah. No one thought it was weird. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden, boom, straight to hell. <laughs> Catholicism and Christianity were like, no. Nah! gonna put a pause on that fun for you yeah (laughs) yeah we decided we don't like it right um so speaking of gay oh yes please oh good segue thank you oh my god that was amazing it's like you've done this before (laughs) it's like i'm a podcaster oh should you say like oh welcome back to rachel uncensored oh right welcome to (laughs) rachel uncensored (laughs) the only place on the internet you can find an uncensored version of me i'm rachel ballinger and uh i'm here with my best friend emily I don't, I've always, between, do I want to say your real last name or your internet last name? I always just go with internet one. Bro staff. There we go. (laughs) Her real last name is, (laughs) do they know it? Yeah. It's on my Instagram. Oh, it's boss staff. Yeah. Okay. I just never say it because everyone always assumes my last name is bro staff. Literally, Zara had um, our other friend Alana and I meet her at the barn to come play with her mini horse. And the barn just implemented that everyone has to sign waivers now in Mm -hmm. case like, you know, you get kicked by a horse or something. And so- uh zara was going and zara and i are are good friends and she went to fill out my form and she put bro staff yeah because if that's on all of your stuff Uh uh-huh like because i've done that a million times i was just like how how, like does summer's last name have an e on it and like i'll go to her instagram real quick oh right right yeah you know if you're like i don't like uh zara's husband is uh clayton abby was writing his last name and she was like is there two G's or one? Right. Like, you don't know the spelling. So you would go. And so she was like, ah, I don't know how to spell it. And then it went to your Instagram or your YouTube or just Googled you or whatever. Right. Bro staff's going to pop up. So yeah. she's going to be like, well, I don't want to be a bad friend and write the wrong name. So right. she's going to write the one that's on everything. I realized I've been hanging out with Alana uh, for a year and some change. And I had no idea what her last name was. I watched her fill out the form and I was like, I have never questioned what your last name is. Yeah. I've heard it twice and I can't remember. I want to say Richards. Nope. (laughs) Alana? I don't know. We don't need to say it on the podcast, but I'm, I don't, I knew it. (laughs) I didn't. I knew it was like a dude's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, it's a standard dude name. Isn't that wild though? I think it's because. All your friends you make growing up, you're in school with them. So, so you hear their last you're name You're always constantly. hearing the last names. And yeah. then when you're an adult, it's like, why would you need to like know someone's last name? Yeah, no. Yeah. Never. It's Unless like they get married and stuff. And then like, there's summers? the wedding. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. I only know Summers because she was my realtor. Oh, and right. And so her name was on all my stuff. And I had, you know, I followed all of her uh, real estate stuff. 
Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, so speaking Back about gay. <laughs> <laughs> Time to check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. Better help. Better help is our sponsor for today. As you get older, you realize you're constantly just having to make tough choices in life. And what's sad is the right choice isn't always clear and right in front of you. Whether you're dealing with decisions about career, relationship, or anything else, therapy can help you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything else. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. I've been doing therapy for years now and one of the first things I had to learn was boundaries and the second was what do I want out of life? What do I want and how do I want to be as a person? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash RU today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash RU. I've been, I haven't filmed anything in three weeks. Yeah, just except vlogs. vlogs. Yeah. So I'm a little rusty here. I'm just ADHD and my meds haven't kicked in yet. So I just saw you take your Adderall. Yeah. I will never take Adderall because <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, mess, I don't like, I just, my body has never done well with any type of prescription drug and I've smoked weed before and it's like it's like 50 50 on it goes well or not and going well just means like I'm just like I sleepy I go tired I sleepy now <laughs> can I eat some pizza first and so like drugs and me just like I just think we're not vibing and every time I've taken a painkiller for like when I had my uh, appendix taken out or my wisdom teeth taken out my body hates it and my mind hates it. Like you get sick? No, like I just am like, I, I have like a panic attack oh. every time. And there's some, someone was talking to me recently, like, well, maybe it was just like the placebo effect of like you thought. And I was like, no, when I had my um, appendix taken out, I didn't think about the fact that I took painkillers. Right. I was so out of it. Yeah. And then, you know, I was like describing, I was like, my body feels so weird. My mom's like, you just had an organ taken out. Uh. And I was like, no, like it feels light and like I feel hot and like. I don't like, I don't want anything to touch me except I just want to lay down and can you cuddle me? But yeah. also like I'm freaking out and like, I was just like, I don't like it. I don't, and I started having like a panic attack. Oh. And my mom was like, okay, sweetie, let's skip the next med and see what happens. Yeah. And I, was, I didn't take the next med. I didn't take the next round. And then I was like, oh, my stomach hurts, but I'm fine emotionally now. Oh my God. And my mom was like, yeah, you shouldn't take hydrocodone or whatever it is. Right. And I was like. Okay, and then I was I was in a lot of pain. I was like, I'm just gonna take it again. Like, who cares? And then the same thing happened, and uh, I was like, uh, Nope. What did you do after it. your eyes? I went to a holistic eye doctor type person. He gave me one sleeping pill. Oh, <gasps> because I heard recovering from LASIK is one of the most painful experiences. I was. It was like I was being tortured. Yeah, but no... I wasn't because torture is real and terrible. <laughs> but but no, no pain medications. No pain medications. And oh. I thought that was normal. I didn't realize I was going to like a holistic natural dude. He would like take all these vitamins, you know, do your eye stretches. <laughs> <laughs> the 2020 thing. Every 20 minutes, look at something away, the, 20 feet away for 20 seconds. I thought you were joking. Okay. Please elaborate. No, that's it. The 2020 method. The 2020 20 method. Uh -uh. You're, not, you're supposed to do this if you work in an office and stare at a screen all day. Oh. Emily, as your boss, yeah. I am implementing um, <laughs> the 2020 20 method. Okay. Where if you're staring at a screen every 20 minutes, you have to take a 20 second break and look at something 20 feet away. And it makes it. Is this room 20 feet? I don't think this room is 20 feet. Great. So <laughs> you just stare at something outside. Okay. For 20 seconds. And then you can look back at your screen and it's supposed to stop your eyes from straining and give them a chance to blink. Okay. It's like an actual method that people are supposed to just do. Okay. But he was like all leading up to your surgery to do this. And then I wasn't allowed to look at my any screen for a week. Yeah. And yeah, you were yeah. working for me at the time, yeah. but you were in Virginia. Um, so anyway, I thought it was normal to not have painkillers because he didn't even talk about it. Ooh. He was like, you can take some Advil if you want. Oh, and I was like, okay, he's like, it's going to be painful. And when it gets too unbearable, put these drops in your eyes that will numb them for a little bit, but they're not good for you. So don't keep taking them. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And like me, not good for you. I'm like, I'm going to go blind if I keep taking these. Right. And then he gave me like one sleeping pill that I took, but I didn't even need it because I was in so much pain that oh. I was literally just passing out from the pain. Oh, okay. And then 
my friend Tini called me. I would do it again a thousand times over the, to have this vision, quote unquote, naturally, like not having yeah. any contacts or glasses. Ugh. I would a thousand percent recommend it to anyone who can. Yeah. And I would do it over again. And like, especially the PRK one, because LASIK is uh, way less painful. Okay. And like no, rec- there's like, you can be fine the next day. Oh. But PRK is more invasive. It takes longer to heal. It's a more strenuous process, whatever. But I would always recommend it because there's like hardly any risk with PRK. Okay, because I'm going to ADHD interrupt. Cute. The only reason, because I've done the math and getting LASIK, it would, it would, the amount I spend on contacts and optometry and like all that kind of stuff, I'd make up for it in three years. Yes. And I'm going to have to have, like, my eyes aren't going to heal. I have to have contacts for the rest of my life. So like if I splurge for the LASIK after three years, it's paid is, for itself. I can't remember how much I paid. They did also didn't discuss price with me. They just came in and were like, sign this. That's how you know it's expensive. <laughs> Should I? How? Uh, hold on. I just know it's three years worth of optometry and contacts and eye insurance. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Look up Lasix. I feel like it's cheaper than what you got. Oh, yeah. It's like, okay. So the difference between Lasix, um, it, there's a, about a $1,000 difference. Okay. So LASIK is between a thousand and twenty six hundred. Yeah, and PRK is two thousand to four thousand. I think I paid like almost three thousand for mine. Yeah, uh, I'm my guy was good. Yeah, I really liked him, and I was like, that was that. But yeah, it is worth it. Well, if okay, you can sa- but it's like buying a house. If you can save up the lump sum, yeah. Well, and it's because I always assumed LASIK was like tens of thousands of dollars, but it's so accessible now yeah. that like it's cheap. The LASIK though. This is where I was. This is why I didn't want to do it. Is like, what if something goes wrong and I am blind for life? Well, and I've I've read horror yes. stories about people getting LASIK and then the pain never goes away, and so they end up taking their own lives because the pain is so unbearable. It's like months and months and months of pain, and like they've gone to like specialists, they've gone to doctors, they've taken pain medication, they've done everything. I'm yeah, I'm I am iffy on LASIK, but. PRK is, um, from what I know, if you're an eye doctor, you're more than welcome to disagree <laughs> with me. But from what I know, PRK is a lot safer. Yeah. And there are way less side effects that can happen. I have okay. ex- the only one I have experienced, and my friend Beth has also done it, and my friend Tini has done it, is just your eyes get more dry than normal. So you just have to put drops in them. Like if I. All the time? No. Well, like, no, like uh, airplanes. Okay. I just put eye drops in my eyes. Okay. And then um, if I drink, my eyes dry out. That's really weird. I know. It's really weird. But yeah. I was just like, why? Are, how come sometimes my eyes? I was like, oh, it's the, the days I, hung, I woke up hungover. Don't drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, oh, my my eyes are dry. Huh. Because I, I'm hung, like. Well, so, I'd rather that than be in so much pain that I want to die. So I think yeah. I'll splurge for the extra thousand dollars yeah. whenever I have extra yeah, money but sitting around. Teeny called me like a year after I'd done it and was like. I'm freaking out. I wanted to do LASIK. And I was like, congrats. And she was like, yeah. And because a big thing, if you wear glasses, your glasses become part of your identity. Oh, yeah. And I had a hard time. I started having a little mental thing. I had to talk to my therapist about it. I was like, I'm going to lose my glasses. Oh. Like, that's weird. You always just wear contacts. You can't even afford glasses. Yeah, no. (laughs) So (laughs) today's sponsor is Warby. (laughs) I didn't get you a birthday present. And I also could just not get you a Christmas present or a Christmas bonus. And then maybe for a video, we could get you PRK if I can film the entire thing. <gasps> yes. Okay. Do I want a lay down flight <laughs> or <laughs> PRK? Just keeps telling me the number one thing on her bucket list. And then whenever I knock it down, meaning one time when she cuddled a cow, so then she adds a new thing to the top. I got to replace it. She got to replace it. So yeah. she told me her number one thing on a bucket list um, was to cuddle a cow, yes. not pet cuddle offense, cuddle so we she cuddled the, i got her to cuddle a cow and then now she's saying she wants to take a lay down flight like she wants to be in first class in the cubbies where they lay down i've never even been in first class but if i'm gonna do it i want to do it hard and i yeah. want to lay down so i was like okay so that's the next thing on the bucket list i told her to tell me the obtainable ones that i could get yeah. her to do yeah. you know and so i'm like okay that one's obtainable and so is the lasik or the prk but you know what i would feel fucking terrible why if i got you prk and then it went wrong (laughs) i blinded you for fucking life that would be the youtube title i blinded my assistant (laughs) i've been trying to figure out what to do 
about because so, I couldn't I wasn't you I wasn't with you for your birthday and I wanted to throw my my present to you was going to be throw you a party oh and yeah then, we had one planned out we and had then, one planned out and, and I, I was psyched for it my and dog then, selfishly decided to die you no know, days <laughs> her turn came to just go be happy forever she's just on a vacation and she just she's hasn't come vacation. back yet and so Emily wasn't in a party mode mm. and naturally naturally totally understand <laughs> And then I did have something planned, uh, but I haven't been home. Oh, I know. And so I haven't planned it, planned it, but I have an idea of what I want to do. But I'm okay. do this instead. Oh. Could I just film every moment of it? Of w- the lay down flight or the PRK? Oh, the PRK. Oh, yeah. I assumed I'm going to move into your house because I'm going to be. Oh, no, you're. Bl- I wouldn't have been able to do it without Abby. Oh, yeah. Like Abby was my saving. She was literally my saving. I could not have survived without her, especially yeah. because I didn't have pain meds. So my Ooh. friend Teeny did it. She called me and she was like, I wanted to do LASIK, but um, if your eye is too thin, you can't do LASIK. Okay. There's like a little layer on your eye. And if it's Ew. too thin, yeah. it can't happen. We'll move past this. So she had to do PRK. Okay. And she was like, I'm terrified because of the recovery process. And I know it's more painful. Yeah. And I was like, do it. A thousand times over, do it. And then I was like, you know, like, it's really painful, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, well, I mean, my doctor's going to give me pain meds. And I was like, what? <laughs> What are you talking about? And she's like, yeah. And so she went to a doctor. He didn't, he was like, just try not to look at screens as long, you know, and here's some pain meds and did every, her recovery process took longer than mine. How about like how much? Um, her vision was still blurry for about three weeks. I had full vision in 10 days. Okay. And so my guy definitely knows what he's doing. Yeah. You know, it's like, don't pick that scab and it'll heal better and quicker. Right. But you're like, oh, put that scab and it'll still do you, heal. Do you think because but... he did a better job on your surgery or you really think the pain meds were doing it? I think it was the fact that I wasn't looking at screens. I was yeah. doing everything he said. I was just taking these vitamins. I was doing my eye stretches. I was like, it's like when you're, anything is recovering. Yeah. If you recover correctly, it's going to recover better and faster nine out of 10 times. So could I have him do it, take all the vitamins, do whatever, not look at screens, but then also do pain pills? Yes, that's what my friend did. Okay, that's what I want to do. Because okay. my friend was like, hey, I heard you got PRK and I'm doing that too. And I was like, oh, and then I already known about Teeny. And I was like, make sure, sh- I was like, who are you going to blow? And she was ending up going to the same dude I went to. Oh, okay. And I was like, and she's a nurse. And I was uh-huh. like, fine pain meds. She goes, oh, I have a million pain meds. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, y- it, you will be great. But like, it is so painful. She's like, no, it won't be. <laughs> she was at back at work three days later because she had so many pain meds. Oh, yeah. But was recovering nicely because she was doing all the things he said. Right. Okay. So you got to combine. You got to combine it all. Okay. Yeah. Wait, do you have to wipe my butt for me? Oh, my God. Rachel Ballinger wipes my butt. I feel like that could be cool. Like a good video or something. Your hands work. Oh. <laughs> How am I supposed to see? Use a bidet. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's why I really need to live here because you have a bidet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we haven't even once talked about what this podcast was no. supposed to be. Also, genuinely, side note, I really was curious for a very long time about how blind people know when to stop wiping. <gasps> and then Molly Burke put a video out. God bless her. I know. I love her. I love her platform. If you don't know who Molly Burke is, she is she she's not fully blind. Like she said, she can see like light and shadows and stuff. But she's she's blind, like right. She's legally blind. Legally blind, yeah. And her. But whole- there is a there's, what is, that, is it called a spectrum? I don't know, like a yeah uh, or. Like- a- z- z- yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> of how blind? Yeah. That it, she is blind. Yeah. Through and through. Yes. But like it's like. She, yeah, I think because it's like you can be like nothing. Yeah, it or can be complete black. Sometimes it can be like lights and stuff. Um, b- blast from the past. Honey Boo Boo's mom was legally blind. Oh. And it's but she could see things from right here. That's why all the videos of her on her phone, her phone's right here. No, I just thought it was like old person syndrome. No, she was. Yeah, she was apparently legally blind. Oh, and then either she got she had the money for eye surgery uh, or she's just faking it until she makes it. I don't know. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, Molly Burke put out a whole a whole video about how you like tell and stuff. Can I remember what the answer was? No, I think. <laughs> but but it's out there in case you're curious. That just popped into my head. Where I, my friends and I used to always think about. Oh, how do blind people dream and it's with sound no unless they've lost they had vision and they lost it then they dream with vision that's always tripped me up when i see people on the internet be like how do you describe a color to a blind person that's never had vision like they're completely born blind yeah born blind how would you describe 
stuff to them because because if you're like describe a tree you're like oh it's brown and it has wood and there's leaves and they're like triangle shapes they can explain things and have them feel it so be like a tree oh. is big whatever but a color i don't know how you describe a color right i think this yeah because you'd be like it's different they're different shades what you can't right how do you just des- describe color so people that were born blind that have never seen something they dream Dreaming. in sound so from what i know yes after looking this up in high school things have changed <laughs> i was in high school like 20 years ago <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's almost 20 years ago since my first year of high school sorry <laughs> that's uh, I still think I just graduated college. I graduated in 2016. I'm like, oh yeah, back like last year when I was in college. I graduated college 10 years ago. I'm are, old. Are you going? Was the, does your high school have reunions? Yeah, I already went. You did? Yeah, I graduated high school in 2009. I didn't. Well, no, I meant like you did, as in you actually went. I refused yeah, to I go went. to mine because my high school is horrible. Like I a mean, horrible experience. Yeah, I. Who I am? Like I. I'm kind of proud of me. Oh, yeah. You should be. And so, um, but yeah, I was also acquaintances and friends with a lot of people. And I went with my best friend. Oh, okay. That's so nice. like, we showed up and it's like, the, the, um, so there was, my high school was huge. Really? And then it was uh, general classes and then AP and gate. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then all of those people that were AP and gate were in a leadership and then so we knew all the people in leadership and leaderships who put on the reunion. Oh. So we were friends or knew the people that were putting it on. Mm. So everyone that went was like just, it was just like one big mass of friends. It was like a small fraction of the people we actually graduated with. Oh. Uh. But it was just like, we happened to be in the leadership circle. Uh-huh. So we knew everything and it was like, it was like fun for us. It was all the popular mean girls that made my life a living hell that put on our reunion. I was like, no, I'm not going. I'm proud of who I am too. Like, oh, I'm- it was all the popular kids. I wasn't, I wasn't a popular kid. But you were at least friends with them? Yeah, I was on good terms with them. Yeah, no, they made my life miserable. And so I was like, no, I'm not going to a reunion of course. to stand in a room and make small talk about you and your six children and your husband, Brett. No. Only? <laughs> I think it was like two people had kids. Really? At the whole reunion. I feel like that's a very, okay, I, we talk about this all the time. I feel like that's a very California thing because where yeah. I grew up, I grew up in a very military heavy area. Yeah. And so what you do, your options when you graduate high school that like we're taught is you get married to a military man and immediately start popping out babies. Mm. You go to college, which was really rare, or you just like find a, a blue collar job in your hometown and you stay there honest work right and it, and it's like those three options yeah and so like i happen because my parents pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed i happen to get out of my town and go to college and like that's where i really got away from like this very toxic mentality that i had from my area growing up where i because i did even when i went to college i was like i'm still gonna marry this military boy and we're gonna have yeah. six children and i'm gonna move to south dakota on the military base and i'm it's like it's crazy how much you don't know when you're that young yes and when making you're 18 those- you're supposed to make these life decisions right you no right so i feel like that but i feel like california is <laughs> we always circle back around yeah i feel like california it's not that way because when i met my 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 ex-wife she couldn't believe that all of my friends had babies and were married because all of her friends were like just starting their lives and i don't yeah. know why it's that huge difference there are so like a lot of that i know of quite a few couples that ended from high school that ended up getting married and are still together there's actually very few divorces from the my high school people i know from high school mm-hmm. a few of them gotten married no one's gotten divorced and barely anybody has kids and when they do it's like oh my god did you hear that person has a kid and like <laughs> just now we're in our 30s a couple more just had a baby what and it's like so wild to me i'm like the black sheep i'm like the only person from my high school class that like doesn't have children oh man none of us have kids barely any of us are married I would say like maybe half are married now, but no one's been divorced yet that I know of. And then like three of us have come out of the closet <laughs> and like, that's it. And it's like, we were all just like pretty much being like, now we're just going to do our lives <sighs> without wow. kids. Right. And like, that's fine. And like, we all focused on getting jobs mm-hmm. or traveling. Oh my God. Yeah. That's something my parents really pushed is like, do not have kids until you're satisfied with your life yeah until you've traveled enough until you've experienced enough you've loved enough you've had enough alone time like yeah. don't have kids until you're like fully satisfied yeah. all of us did go to college though 
and get a degree. That, ma- that makes that makes a huge difference because and it's not because like and you were not implying this, but just put that no, out no, there. No. It's not because like you're smarter or you're elite or like you Mm-mm. think you're better than everyone to have kids it's we, because no. you're so busy. Yeah, you're so like you're just like I have to get through this. Exactly. You're focused on one thing and so it like stalls that for yeah, you. Yeah, you're like okay, I have to get my degree and then I have to get a job and then I well I need to stick at my job for a while to get you yeah. know like promoted right and then you're like well i'm promoted i i don't i can't lose this job uh-huh yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. there it is and right it's just like a little cycle that just keeps happening mm-hmm. you're like well this and then this eventually right and then now that we're in our 30s people are like okay i have to i have to sit down and decide now do i want to have a kid right, or because not? literally your biological clock is ticking yeah i'm like <laughs> i have like two to four more years to figure this out right i'm like and then well to figure out if i want to have them because i can then I have to decide, I'm like, okay, am I freezing my eggs? Yeah. Or because I'm a lesbian, <laughs> do, am I deciding that my significant other would carry? Oh, yeah. Or yeah. use their eggs? That's the good thing about us dating younger women. <laughs> we have a few extra years. <laughs> I got like three more years. <laughs> right. I, so she, <laughs> we both got like a little, a little two-year yeah. you know, gap that we can depend but, on. But I mean, yeah, like even, we have to decide if we want them or not. And then yeah. we have to decide all this stuff. And I'm like... That's also, okay, also, I, like, blew Alana and Zara's mind the other night. We, like, went out to a bar, and we were talking about, like, our childhoods and, you know, typical stuff you talk about at a bar. Yeah. And um, I was telling them, and, and I think I've, we've talked about this before, um, about our high school differences, because the area I grew up in was very poor, and uh, I mean, I'll just leave it at that. It was very poor and very military-based, which means, like, there was a lot of crime, and like it, it was a scary area that I grew up in. And so when I started dating my because ex. Because the area doesn't have the resources, not because the people are trash. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, all systematic everything. Yes. You know. Um, and so when I started dating my ex-wife, who grew up in San Francisco in a very wealthy area, we were talking about our high school experiences. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, when you used to go through the metal detector. And she was like, what? And I was like, you. No, nope, never didn't. did that. We had. And so I was like telling Zara and Alana and like they could not wrap their heads around it. We had metal detectors. Once a week, we had drug raids where they would like literally, I'm not even kidding. It was so traumatic because I grew up going to a very Christian, small private school. And then my like we had finance troubles um, as a family. And so then I had to go to a public school. So yeah. I spent the first 13 years of my life with the same nine children learning yes. about Jesus and praising God and not knowing about anything horrible that's going on in the world and yeah. then getting dumped into this public school, not knowing anyone or anything. And they would bust into the classroom like i'm not even talking they wouldn't knock you wouldn't see them coming they would crouch down so you couldn't see them through the window in the door they would like shove that shit open and they'd go hands on your desks and like it didn't matter what you had in your hands you had to drop it and put your hands flat on the desks and you weren't allowed to move your hands from that position so you couldn't hide anything or swallow anything and then they would bring the drug dogs around to sniff your backpacks and your body they'd like pull people out into the halls to search them they'd like bust open lockers they would do car drug searches what the fuck people someone got shot outside of my cafeteria when i was having lunch because a drug deal went wrong and i thought like genuinely thought this was normal high school activities nope let me tell you that much not even a little bit yeah my <laughs> uh, my high school the hallways were all outdoors because it doesn't snow what? in santa barbara oh yeah so it's literally like i don't know how to describe it because i'm like we had an outdoor high school and people are like you're what and i'm like you go your classrooms are indoors but the second you step out of your classroom you're outdoors huh it's like the whole thing's opening up to like the quad so it's like a little mini college basically yeah okay meanwhile my high school looked like a jail it's yeah. like all barbed wire fences. ours is gorgeous there's, you look outside your window and there's just palm trees oh and my god <laughs> we yeah i we never had um we never had like we ha- would have like practices for like Okay, we're practicing if there's a, a shooter on campus. Yeah. Or yeah. if there's a fire. Um, but we never had an actual scare. And then the my the year after I left, so my freshman year of college, there was a gun scare and everyone was locked in their classrooms for like eight hours or something. Mm-mm. People were like pissing and shitting in the corners. No. Until really? finally kids were like, It's five PM, you legally cannot keep me here anymore. <laughs> and they left. Kids just started leaving, like, shoot me. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> Why is that me? <laughs> They're like, like, I gotta uh, fucking get home. I have a test tomorrow. I gotta go study. Right. And so like What but did it end up being? A this is this is what it was. A brown kid 
is what they said. Oh, cool. Had a Gatorade bottle in his pocket. Are you fucking kidding me? They thought because he was Hispanic. Yeah. That it had to have been a gun. It was a Gatorade bottle in his pocket. Why did he not just pull it out and show it? Like, because he was just standing there and then like cops started yelling at him. So we ran. Oh, yeah. Because he's like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think he was ditching class or something. And right. And was just like, ah. Yeah. And then they were like, ah. And he, like, I think he like grabbed his pocket or something to run because he didn't want his shit to fall out. Right. So they thought it was a gun. Or his pants were falling. Like, you know, something was happening. Yeah. He could have just like his hand could have like breezed near his pocket yeah. as he's running. Like, and they're like, ah. Run! Yeah. Oh my, okay, cool, cool. I love that trauma for everyone involved. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, well. <sighs> yeah. So, sucks to suck. You did not have metal detectors and drug dogs. And one time a drug no. dog ate my chapstick. That was really traumatic for me. Fucking. And I really haven't processed that in therapy yet. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> because I was in the middle of putting on chapstick and it was what, like, it was one of those um, N- Nivea chapsticks that were like, lo- like thick. You know? Oh, I know like, what you're talking about. Yeah, like really thick chapstick. And I was in the middle of putting it on and they bust in, hands on your desk. And so, you know, I had to put my chapstick down and then lay my hands flat. And then they made us evacuate the room because there was a, an alert from one of the dogs. And so they don't, if a dog alerts, they don't want to pull the drugs out in front of the kid. So they make us go out of the classroom, stand out in the hallway with our, our palms against the wall. It's like literally being like whatever. In jail? Yeah. Um, and then they come out with the dog and whatever contraband and, you know, take the kid away. Um, and so when I came back in, my chapstick literally had teeth marks, like a bite out of it. (laughs) Okay, cool. That's really funny. Uh, Oh, man. So apparently a lot of California schools are not like this. No, no. Interesting. And it's because we have funding, which makes it so people don't feel the need to do illegal things because they're taken care of. And then. Yep. It's all. Yeah. All right. Let's check to see if we have a sponsor for today, and then maybe we can actually do what I had planned. Today. Woo-hoo! Sponsor, sponsor! ZocDoc. ZocDoc is our sponsor for today. Have you ever been on a hunt for a new doctor? So you literally ask everyone you know for the recommendations. You want to find a doctor that gets you, listens to you, and makes you feel comfortable. And finally, you hear of a good one, and you call, and then they don't take your insurance. Well, wipe away your tears. Put away the ice cream and head over to ZocDoc to find and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. These doctors all have verified reviews from actual patients, not robots. The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between 24 to 48 hours. That's it. You can even score some same-day appointments. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few taps. So if you want to try it out, go to ZocDoc.com slash Rachel and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Rachel. ZocDoc.com slash Rachel. Well, now this isn't as entertaining. I think what we've been talking about has been more entertaining than what I actually wanted to do. I was just going to be really do stereotypical, not stereotypical. I was going to enforce well, our stereotypes as gay people I love and that. take quizzes on what type of gay we are. How many flannels do you own? What <laughs> type of lesbian? Because if you put gay, you're just going to take a gay man quiz. Oh, right, right, right. What type of lesbian are you quiz? I would love this. I would love to know this. Because it's just we have. There's so many different types of things. Yes. Although I did just learn. I think we learned this together. What are we not supposed to say? It's like white lesbian women can't use this term. It's, it's stem. Stud? Stud. Stud. It was yes. stud. And why, why was that? It was um, uh, Amber f- told Amber's us. Amber's closet. It's a, a yeah. black women. That was their term oh. to describe themselves. And then people took it and were like, mm, we're not going to just use it for black people. We're going to use it for all the... Okay, so that's reserved for... We're not supposed to use stud, right. And so okay, okay. I, I use stem, which is a mix of stud and femme. Is that allowed? Is that I allowed? I don't know. <laughs> I want to say the right things, but... Yeah. So I, I heard another term, if we're not allowed to use... St- or if we're not supposed to use stem, is um, chapstick lesbian. Yeah, but a lot of people don't know what that is. Okay, so we're here today to educate you. 
chapstick is because there's lipstick lesbian, which is supposed to be super feminine, girly. And then there's lip gloss. What's that? I don't know. I just made it up. Oh, <laughs> I, I was so intrigued. I think lip gloss. So there's, there's lipstick who's like done up to the nines. Heels. Long. Yeah. It can nails. Very straight passing. Yes. I think lip gloss is someone who's. Who's more on a like I think more on the femme side, but definitely like gay present like looks gay, but more would, on the femme side. Would my girlfriend be like lip gloss? I would say yes. Yours is yeah. lip gloss because I don't think she's chapstick. Because no, she's not. We're chapstick. You and I are chapstick. Where we're like a little butchy sometimes, but then like we also like put on like makeup. Yeah, we like but we love, Yeah, we love like guy clothes and guy shoes. But we know how to rock a crop top if we need it. Exactly. But yeah, and I love my short shorts. And my bikinis. Yeah, right. I, I wanted this summer, I kind of wanted to explore the board shorts and the sports bra look. But I don't know if I can pull that off. I think you could. I think I don't want to because it would be like giving up the last feminine thing clothing wise that I had. And, and why do you need that? Genuinely ask me Because I, I really feel like I like those things and they make me feel good. Okay. And... I don't know. I'm like the other look. I, I don't feel that mask. Okay. So it's about like what you feel best. Yeah. In. Like okay. I feel like if I, cause my clothes I wear sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, I look a little too mask, but I look good. Yeah. And I feel like if I were to switch into the board short sports bra look, I'd be like, come, I'd be like, I, I look good, but I also just, I would feel too mask in it. Okay. So it's like, it's like a, not who you are. Right. Okay. What, what about bikini top board shorts? No, I really don't like board shorts on myself. Okay. On myself. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm really self-conscious about my, my bottom half. I have an incredible ass. That is my, you do. that is my one thing that I'm like, God shone his light on me. Yes. He was like, I'm going to give you trauma and depression and anxiety and a personality disorder, but God damn it, I'm going to give you a good ass. Yeah. That booty going to shake. Love my ass. I don't like my legs very much. I'm very self-conscious of my legs and I always have been. And that stems from like gymnastics and always being like made fun of for that i've never thought negatively of your legs it was it was always my coaches they would comment okay go all fuck the, yeah they would always call like if i had a tiny bit of like any like little dimple i had in my leg they would comment on and be like Girl, i got dimples for days everyone does it's so the normal back, and then you get the little bumpies from your the legs in the back of your hair not, uh-huh. and then like right under your ass cheek you get the bumpies yes. if you're wearing short shorts and you sit on something and your yep. legs are like i don't want to sit on that right that's all normal oh, i yeah. got stretch marks on my inner thighs look at oh, that girl same Ooh. yeah but it's, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm processing the trauma of, of 10 years of being told mm-hmm. that I don't look good. But and so, then you're also dealing with social media where everyone airbrushes all that stuff out. Oh, yeah. Well, and I'm dealing with comments. I, I was just, I'm sorry. <laughs> she just I just closed don't her think computer. we're going to find out what lesbians we are today. <laughs> and that's fine. Um, I was just talking about this. I can't remember who I talked about this with, but it, oh, I think it was you. When people think they're being nice by commenting something and then it's just the most destroying thing yes like people a lot of times when we film something together especially if we're being goofy and like we're in costumes or like Mm -hmm. you're dressing me up in something or whatever like I'm a little more exposed than normal people will always comment things like god Rachel's so hot look at her six-pack Emily don't worry you'll get there because they (gasps) notice that like I'm losing weight and like, and so they'll think like I assume they assume I like want to look like you or like I'm trying to look a certain way uh, and, and like they're not understanding what's actually going on. And so then they'll like they'll comment thing, or they'll be like, you've lost so much weight. Oh, my God, you look so much better. Yeah. Or they'll comment like, Rachel, you're so hot, like uh, obsessed with your body, like, you know, whatever. Emily, you're so hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Or, oh, my favorite one I ever got. And again, I understand they're writing these with the best intentions. Yeah. The other one that I got one time, I think it was on the Halloween video where we were in the cheerleading costumes. And I think that was the most exposed I've ever been on your channel. Same as well. And also, so everyone knows, I was so uncomfortable and self-conscious. You wouldn't know it, though, watching the video. Girl can put on a show. Yeah. Because I know to look good, you have to exude confidence. Yeah. I know that's, I want to say 20% of looking fine in an outfit is the confidence you give. So internally, I was extremely insecure, hmm. but externally, I knew not to do that. Right. So I was like, OK, if you're going to if you're going to fucking show your entire body, show your goddamn body. Well, and there was no one being like, oh, she shouldn't be. You know? I know, because yeah. it's the confidence that you give off with it. And anyway, yeah. so continue no, no, that no. cheerleading video. Go. Um, someone commented and said, 
oh what was it, it was just on the tip like tip of my tongue it was it said something at the same lines of like rachel look you're a six pack you're so hot like you look so good in that outfit what they say it was something like oh and you look fine too emily <laughs> it was just some like <laughs> backhanded and i was just like damn it you know but anyway, yeah, so I feel like that's why I want to try like the whole board shorts thing because I love my ass, but I, I'm still working on like getting over my whole like leg trauma or whatever. And yeah. I, I feel like if I was like to wear like a bikini top or a sports bra top and like the board shorts, like maybe I'd feel a little more confident. I just got to try it out. I just got to try it out, you know? Yeah. Try it out. I mean, whatever makes you comfortable. Right. Because I feel like that is when you look your best is when you're most confident. Like yeah. You said. And like, yeah, because there's I have said that I've decided dresses make me emotionally uncomfortable okay when i put on a dress i feel wrong okay i feel wrong in a dress i'm i i don't think i've ever seen you in a dress correct because yeah. when i came out i used to always try and dress up and i never felt good in dresses Mm-mm. never and like i'd be like i look hot right i don't feel good okay and that's like a big un- like thing to realize and understand yeah it's like i can look myself in the mirror look myself in the picture i'm like i look fucking hot as hell right i don't like it Mm. Mm -hmm. and it's like i love looking hot like right i love looking attractive right but i didn't feel i didn't feel right and then you know when i was thinking i was straight i just like i just didn't understand it Mm -hmm. i was like i'm just weird i guess and then when i came out and i try wore i try to wear dresses a few more times and i was like i don't i don't like this Mm -hmm. why am i I don't have to do this and then i put on a suit and i was like there it is yeah It's so freeing. Like, I feel like this is a universal experience within the queer community is like realizing you don't have to do things anymore. Correct. And and like that can be like a truth for a straight person as well. Yeah. Like realizing like, I don't know, like if if you're a child and your mom's constantly putting you in dresses and then, you know, you're finally 18, you make your own money, you're out of the house, you can pick your own clothes, which you should be able to do your entire life. But, you know, let's just scenario. Um, And you realize you don't have to do those things anymore. Yes. like you can shoot you can shop in the boys section if you want that's yeah. the first thing i do when i go to ross is i you know you're you go in you're supposed to turn right to the girls i turn left and go right to the boys yeah i that's you know? every time i go shopping now yeah and yeah i was in um i was in vegas for zara's bachelorette and someone said oh why don't you try one of my dresses on mm. and i was like they make me emotionally uncomfortable and abby trying to be a really good girlfriend was just like what do you mean mm. and because her and I, she loves, I, I dress more mask, like in men's clothing, but I'm not, I'm not flat out mask. Yeah. Butch, I, like I have, am I like an in-betweeny thingy, chapstick. Yeah. And she, she definitely, uh, I would say Abby's in between, I call her a, a, an athletic gay. She's in between chapstick yeah. and lip gloss. Yeah. She can definitely lip gloss it up. Yeah, because she wore dresses a lot in Europe because it was yes. so hot and she and looked really good in those. She, yeah, and she was like, I, I, yeah, men's clothes are more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yes, physically. Right. And it's something you can't explain. And I got a glimmer of maybe what it's like for, because like, I will never understand um, trans people. Like, yeah. I support a thousand percent and yeah. I understand that, like, what they want and I will support it. But their feelings. Yeah. I've never been like, I just, I cannot understand what it's like to feel like you're in the wrong body mm-hmm. and i got a small tiny fraction yeah of what that's like and i was like i'm in a dress and i feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. emotionally not physically mm-hmm. emotionally this is wrong yeah that was the first thing i thought when you said that i was like that must be how trans people before they transition or whatever they choose to do in their journey yeah. that must be how they feel because you know like you can look amazing. Like if, yeah. if you're male, if you're female to male, you know that you can look hot yes. as a female, but you're like, this is wrong. Yeah. And I was just like, this, this is like a sliver. I know it's nothing to the magnitude in which they feel and go through. But I was like, this is a sliver. I kind, I, mm-hmm. oh my God. Like, and I, it, not that it brought me a new light, but it was just like a, a I was kind of glad that I was able to f- feel it for a second. Yeah, a tiny, like it's a, an a appreciation. Of yeah. Like, I mean like, oh my God, like obviously the, yeah, I'm like, oh, the shit they fucking have to go through. Yeah. But I, and then Abby was like immediately trying to be supportive when I was like, no, it may, emotionally it feels wrong mm-hmm. to wear a dress. And she's like, okay, I'm, but like, you know, cause we were about to go to a pool party. She's like, you can, you can wear shorts and, and a t-shirt or a sports bra yeah. if you want. I was like, no, I love a bikini. And she's like, yeah. what? And she's like trying to understand. She's I'm like, like, make me a flow chart here. <laughs> I was like, it's just literally dresses and skirts. Mm-hmm. I really just 
don't feel correct in them. And I was like, but I love my uh, my uh, jean short shorts. I love bikinis. I love crop tops. Yeah. I love my makeup. I loved what Abby was wearing yesterday. And I feel like if I felt more confident, that is what the look I'd like to go for, where she was like in a very comfortable t-shirt, but these cute feminine shorts. Yes. I was like, oh, that's so cute. I love that. And I like when I go through moments, like I know my body barely changes, but emotionally how I view my body goes dra- oh, goes yeah. up and down drastically. Yeah. Right now, I know my body would look hot as fuck in a crop top, but I'm emotionally not at the point where I want to wear one. Yeah. But w- I love when I'm at that point because I love a fucking crop top. I mm-hmm. love having my short shorts and my thing, but I give off a mask vibe at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't look super femme, but I still look cute. Right. Like it's a weird, a weird little moment. Clothing is so like, I yeah, it is such an, like an identity it for is. everyone. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's it's such a, a fun thing to figure out once you have figured it out. It's yeah. such like a torturous thing when you don't have control over it or like you haven't figured it out yet. But then once you figure it out, it's so amazing. Will you go out downtown with us this weekend? Because yeah, Summer and I, so Summer is someone that dresses very opposite of me. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. she has, she has been blessed with a, I don't want to be a guy in huge tracts of land. <laughs> Her, she has big boobs. <laughs> I don't know how to say it without sounding most like I'm objectifying her. Yeah, most respectful and she way possible. Loves them, and yeah, yes, she should, and she displays them. Yeah, proudly. Hell yeah! And girls showing what she's got, working yeah. with what she's got, and she dressed very femme. Everything's super tight. Oh my god! Yeah, everything she wears is so tight. I'm like, how do you breathe? And shows off everything. And she's in heels, and her hair has taken uh, her three hours. She looks her gorgeous. makeup. Oh, um, the way she does her winged liner. I'm like, teach me. Gorgeous. Yeah. Right. I take 20 minutes to get ready. Same. <laughs> A shower, and then after my shower, 20 minutes. I'm done. Mm-hmm. As long as I haven't washed my hair. If I have to dry my hair, that obviously that's gonna take yeah. forever. But like, if I was like a rinse. I can straighten my hair, put my makeup on, and put my clothes on 20 minutes out the door. Yeah. Okay. So when we were at Shania Twain, I was wearing a real, Abby was like, I love your outfit. You look so cute. And I was just wearing my, my nice black, but um, not a uh, black loose pants with mm-hmm. a belt, an oversized t shirt with my handkerchief. Nice. And Converse. And my hair was straight and I had my makeup on. You Perfect. know, I look cute. Yeah. I got rings on, mm-hmm. got my watch Tyron on. Everyone knows you're gay. I'm gay. <laughs> and I look good. But like, and I'm not super mask, but I'm not femme at all. Right. And then Abby looks over to Summer and she's like, Summer, you look great too. Like you look so hot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we all compliment each other. And then Abby looks between the two of us and goes, I want a night where you guys switch clothes. Oh my God. And Cause Summer's uh, like tall as well. Yeah. And so like I would fit in her clothes and she would fit in mine. And, oh. and uh, we, uh, Summer and I looked at each other and we're like, yeah. So we want to do it this weekend. Where her and I switch outfits before we go out. And so whatever she was going to wear downtown, I will put on whatever I was going to wear. And I was like, I want it to be these outfits that you're wearing right now. Yeah. Because uh, Summer was wearing black skinny jeans. Okay. A top that is like deep V to show the boobs. I'm not as blessed. Well, she always says, I mean, and it's a lie because she just has huge boobs. She has boobs. But she's always like, it's about the support. It's not about the boobs. Because I always say the same thing. I'm like, my, because I'm always, every time she walks in the room, I'm like, Summer. Yeah, tennis and like like not in a sexual way like i like eat no like, as like in a like as a friend like praising pra- look at you go boosting bitch. your other friend yeah. boosting it and, and i'm and she's like she'll always, I'll always be like i want to be you when i grow up even though she's three years younger than me yeah and then she's like she's like you could you could wear this and i'm like no summer i have mosquito bites and she's like no it's all about the support you just no. need the right support i'm like no no <laughs> that's not it that's not it unless you got some duct tape and a screw you're gonna put in my back <laughs> i don't <laughs> there's no getting them up like that oh uh, so but her and i are gonna switch and go downtown for an evening and i i know that i can look good in anything because yeah. i also know it's about the confidence yeah. and i i am i feel a very attractive person um, so I want to go downtown on hers. And I was like, Summer, if you wear my outfit downtown, one, you're not going to get hit on. No. Uh-uh. It's an immediate man repellent. Yeah. But you will have never been so comfortable. Oh, yeah. You will want to hang out downtown all night. Because yeah, she always wants to go home like around 11. She's going to be going until like three or four in the morning. And she's going <laughs> to dance her. Uh-huh. Heart. She doesn't have to worry about her boobs falling out. She doesn't yep. have to worry about standing up straight. Yep. She doesn't have to worry about her feet. Mm-hmm. She's just going to go and have some fun. Right. And she was like, I would love to be comfortable for an evening. Yeah. Yes. I was like, 
Yeah. Oh my God. That makes me, I want to see this so badly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's going to, I think it's going to, when I put it on, everyone's going to be like, oh my God, you look so hot. I'm like, I know. And then they're like, like, be like, Summer, you look amazing. And it's going to be hilarious. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's going to, yeah. I wonder how she's going to like deal with not being hit on. Yeah. Not that like she needs it. But it's a very jarring thing. And I did notice this when I went from dressing very girly to dressing mm-hmm. how I dress now. Yes. It's very jarring because you walk in expecting to like ward men off or like, you know, yes. do this or that. And then when they just completely like glance and then look away, it's like, whoa, like it's, it's a blow. Yeah. I mean, like I've when I do get hit on when I do get hit on, it's. I'm always shocked by it. Yeah. And so when guys talk to me, I think that they're just being like, hey, dude. No, my head, dude. Right. And so I talked to him. And then after a minute, I'm like, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and like, Abby's like, you don't have to do that. Like, she's like, talk to, they're being nice. Just talk to them. You can like, kindly let them down. I'm like, I'm confused why they're speaking to me. Right. D- look at me. And I realize they're drunk. So yeah. if they're not looking down, I'm pretty. Yeah. Like, they're just, I have makeup up. on and I have my hair straightened up here up. I'm pretty. Yeah. And, like, I've got earrings on and they're just like, okay, whatever. And also, baggy clothes are in right now for women. Yes. Yeah. So, if they're not fully t- standing back and taking a full view and getting my, uh, my energy as well, they're not going to see it. Right. And so, like, it usually happens when I'm standing in a crowded bar mm. and there's people around me and they are literally just looking at faces. Mm-hmm. And, um, the last time abby loves making friends oh my god she'll make friends with everybody and anybody and it's her favorite thing to do is make new friends and it's my least favorite thing i don't like talking to people <laughs> and <laughs> you're like ew get away so she'll she'll make friends with a group of people and then i'm like all right i'll talk to one of you and her and then her and i walked out and we had told everyone that we were dating like mm-hmm. and then but guys don't care they're no. still gonna talk to you and we leave and as we leave a guy comes up and he's like can I kiss you on the cheek? Ew. And I looked at him and then I looked at Abby and Abby just starts laughing and all of his guys are like, dude. Cause like, and he goes, oh shit, are you gay? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's my girlfriend. He looks at her and he looks at Abby and goes, well, damn, I was going to hit on you next. Oh my God. Uh-uh. <laughs> Bro, y'all need to read some shit. Like uh-huh. that, that's, you were so off course. <laughs> oh my God. Also, okay, this was a really fun discussion uh, that the I think we had it the night that that Devin the night before Devin was leaving. And so a couple of people, you know, came over to say bye to her. And and it was like Danny, Summer, Alana and me and Devin. And and we were all talking about how there's uh, a double standard about how women are allowed to talk to other women and how men are allowed to talk to women. And it only got called a double standard because when you put lesbians into the equation. So basically we were saying as a lesbian woman, someone was arguing that it's inappropriate that I comment on another female friend's body because I'm a lesbian and I find female bodies attractive. So they're like, what makes, why is it when a guy says that it's creepy, but you as a lesbian woman, it's not. And I was arguing. Okay. I have an argument for it. Okay. I was the same one. I was arguing because I can view people in two separate ways. So when I'm looking at my girlfriend, yes, I'm sexualizing her body and like thinking about her body in a, a sex manner or whatever. But when I'm looking at a friend, like if I'm looking at you or I'm looking at Joy or Devin, whoever, I'm looking at you. I'm comparing when I'm complimenting your body, I'm complimenting your body because I'm complimenting it as a woman, not as a lesbian. Correct. I was going to say my, my thing is because you know what it's like to have a female body. Yes. Because you know this, like when a girl walks in and like her boobs are popping out. Right. You know the struggle she went through to figure out the bra, to figure out the shirt. She contemplated if she's showing too much, mm-hmm. too little. She told herself to be confident and she walked into a room and you are you are commenting on, yes, her boobs, but also like what she went through and the confidence she put behind it. Yeah. And that also because we don't have those. Yeah. We're like, me. Well, the, <laughs> the argument melded into basically they were saying when you because I, I said I think it was because I said I was like oh yeah I'm always naked around my friends and it makes them feel comfortable enough to like change in front of me or like I love that you say that and you have literally never been naked around me you put in a very big effort not to ever be around me when I'm naked yes so like you knock joy doesn't she just walks right in which I don't mind yes but like if you were to walk right in when I was naked I and just, it's because I don't I don't care to see your body yeah and I think it's safer to not. Just because we're both gay? Yeah. Well, no, not like we would be attracted to each other. I think right. it's just like overall, I figured down the line, your girlfriend would appreciate that I 
haven't seen your naked body. Well, and, and that's how this whole conversation, that's, uh, that brought me back. That's how this whole conversation started because I was on FaceTime with my girlfriend and I was getting out of the shower and she was like, oh, she was like, I was literally just talking about how great your ass is. Show them your ass. And like, obviously, like only if I'm comfortable. And it was with her sister and her best friend who's bi. And I was just like, oh, yeah. And like, I'm it's so hilarious saying that it sounds like such a contradiction because like I just said that I'm uncomfortable with my body. But like with my friends, it's just a body like I'm yeah. very fine being naked in front yeah. of my friends. Um, and so I was just like, oh, yeah. And so like I whipped around and like showed them my ass like on FaceTime. And they're like, oh, my God. And like, you know. And I was saying this to like our friend group later and they're like, how does that not bother your girlfriend that you're always naked in front of people that could be like sexually attracted to you or like whatever. And like we got into this whole debate about how even though I'm a lesbian, I can block that off. Oh, yeah. And compliment other women's bodies, either comparing them to mine as another woman or just, yeah, praising them for the amount of effort that they've put in. I just do the thing where I'm like. I don't ever want anything to be I think it's because I was closeted for so long and Mm. I had feelings when I saw my friend's bodies Mm. that I kind of was like that feels wrong I should look away and then now obviously now like what I've understood what everything is yeah if a friend is naked in front of me if they're a friend there is not like it's like I you can cut that off you and I are very we can cut that off right if we but why do we not give men the same benefit as that because because men haven't been taught to cut it off by society Okay. I think it's because society hasn't taught them that that's a thing that they should do. Right. Society has taught men women are there for sex. Right. You and I grew up, women are there to be friends. Mm -hmm. And then later we figured out they're great with the sex part too. But we have learned, we grew up not sexualizing them. That was not the priority. That was not the priority. Yeah. The priority was friendship. Yeah. And companionship. Right. And then we realized later to put the sexual part on but only when we're searching because we are our group of friends were females. Yeah. So only we only sexualize the ones that we were trying to be in a relationship with. Yes. Or to have a sexual relationship yes. with. Because I can see Summer's boobs and I'll literally and I have and I've told her before because we've changed in front of each other. I'm like, Summer, you have such nice tits. And it's not like a, oh, I want to grab them. It's like a what the fuck? I want that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's because of how we're raised. Men were just raised to see f- females as partners like uh sexual partners and yeah. romantic partners we were raised to see them as friends and okay. then later put the uh, romantic and sexual part in it that's a good explanation so we're, you and i are very it's very easy for us to just cut that off right because i'm attracted to who i'm attracted and it, it goes back to the argument too that not all lesbian not well not any lesbians lesbians are not attracted to all women no it's like as a man you can walk around a mall and see 50 women and you maybe think two are hot yes so it's, it's like i can see 50 boobs and yeah. I, like i'm just like well unless i'm sexually attracted to you and i think i have a chance like i'm not gonna look at them in a sexual way yeah so like i don't know i just don't i don't I try not to see my friends naked or anyone naked. Yeah. And I try not to show my, I also just like don't want to show myself naked. Yeah. And I think it's just like, I don't want ever to get so comfortable with that, that I end up making someone else uncomfortable. Okay. Or later, like if like your girlfriend or let's, I doubt there will be ever a future girlfriend outside of it. Knock mm-hmm. on wood. Like if any other future girl that you had ended up with, or for some reason, if I ended up with someone else and they were like uncomfortable, like, you've seen Emily naked. That's weird. Like, I'm huh. kind of uncomfortable with that. Yeah. So I'm always thinking future. Yeah. And I don't need to see you naked and you don't need to see my, me naked. Yeah. So I'm not going to put anything uncomfortable in the future that might maybe happen. OK. So I'd rather just not because I can knock for two seconds and be like, put your pants on. <laughs> yeah. I know you're always knocking, which. Is hilarious because I find it so weird because I'm so used to people just opening and walking That's in. That's true because I want people to knock for me. Yeah. Because yeah. I want, I, I don't want everyone seeing my body. I, uh, I choose who can see me. Okay. Yeah. And that's the difference. And it comes down to like people like well, underwear and bathing suits, like the same thing. I'm like consent. Yeah. It's not the same thing because right. a bathing suit, Ooh. I'm giving you consent to see my body. Right. My underwear, I'm not. Ooh, I like that. I've never and thought so about that. And so I way. want you to knock, and I would, uh, and so I'm gonna do that. I'm going to knock for you. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, and it's like when people, like when kids are change or someone's changing, and they're like, ah, and they're like, relax, it's just me. I'm like, no, mm. don't relax. Right. That's their body, and they decide who get to see it. Right. Like, 
that's like that's just like a huge thing like if a kid if you like i've taken kids to restrooms and stuff and they're like turn around oh. i'm like okay yeah and i'll turn around and look at the wall right and like you tell me when you're done oh, like my nephew I lived with him for nine months and I have been changing his diaper since literally Mm -hmm. the second he popped out the womb. But when he turned like three ish, uh, I I think that's when he started to realize like bodies are a little bit of a private thing. And so I would still have to take him to the bathroom and I put him on the toilet and then he'd be like, okay. And then I'd have to stand outside the door and close it. And it's just like, yeah, like just do what people are comfortable with. I'll never say like, oh, it's just, oh, it's fine. Like, just go. I mean, like, you know. Right. Or yeah. Or like when my friends like when a group of people walk in and someone's like ah and i'm and even if i've seen them a million times mm-hmm. and like i'm not gonna be like relax they're just it's fine they can see you it's not a big deal right i'll never do that i wonder like because i know where mine stems from because in gymnastics we're in these tiny little leotards mm-hmm. because you know that's what you're in for gymnastics and we were constantly taught that our bodies were a machine they're not sexual they're not your like we were taught they weren't ours yeah they're here to perform a task and you perform it the way we want it performed and so it's like my auto- my bodily autonomy got taken away yeah like i had to i had to meld my body literally meld my body into what someone else deemed was correct and what they wanted you know for the sport and just for horrible standards and so i wonder for me i'm just like it's that's why i'm just like it's just a body Be- yeah because it's but like it's not for me. some people their body is the only thing they have control of yeah the only thing that's theirs yeah something they cherish Mm -hmm. something like it's a body someone's body is different to every single person yeah so it's just like virginity too like i'm never going to judge someone for like being 26 and a virgin just because like you know i was like 19 or whatever or like it like if you're i mean obviously i have things where i'm like you need to be a certain age so your brain is developed enough that you can understand what's going on yes but like i'm never going to like judge anyone for like consensual enthusiastic sex at whatever age you decide to do that i feel like it's the same thing like it's it go, it's your body yeah your choice you do what you want with it it's your virginity your choice you do what you want with yeah. it like you know it's just and if like, someone wants to have a lot of sex with a lot of different people that too great yeah if you want to have sex with just one person cool fine and that is your choice as long as you're not being pressured or feel society like not even like by a person but like society yeah like i don't want you or like the church is pressuring you but you feel mm. a different way i don't want any of that just you figure out what you want for your body and yeah. how you want it to be treated and that's how it should be treated i think that's gonna be like not forever, but I feel like that's going to be one of my biggest regrets is I was told constantly by this girl that I grew up with that the first time you have sex, it's horrible. It's awful. It's painful. You're not going to enjoy it. So do it with someone that you don't care about so that you can get it over with. And then when you're dating someone you care about, you already know what you're doing and it can be fun. And so I had it in my head. I had to find someone disposable basically. And so I dated this guy for like three months enough where like I felt comfortable and I trusted him and like, you know, whatever. But I, I knew like, I wasn't enthusiastic about it. Yeah, you're like, but it's not my life partner. Yeah, but I was like, eh, I'm just going to get it over with anyway because I had that in my, I was like, I'm 19. Everyone's making fun of me for being 19 and a virgin. And oh, like, our battery was oh, exhausted. Well, anyway, that was that was the end of my story. But All right, well, I'm just going to, the camera's off, but we're, <laughs> audio's still going. We need to end this. This is over an hour. Oh, whoopsie. <laughs> we didn't do anything I wanted to do, but that's fine. I love you guys. Thanks for watching and listening. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks with another Rachel Uncensored. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet where you can find the uncensored version of me, Rachel Ballinger. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, or follow, or do whatever this platform tells you to do so that you can get notified every time I post a new episode. Love ya.